This is our dog, Summer. We got her from a rescue back in the summer of 2020. She is three and a half years old. Um, she was the runt of her litter, um, but she is very active, very high energy. She has free reign of our backyard, so she just loves playing with the kids and chasing squirrels and exploring. Loves the snow, loves the water. Just an all around good dog. Um, She's super fast, um, and she almost looks like a greyhound when she's running. Um, this is a video of her playing with her cousin, and all these videos right now um, are prior to the injury she suffered. So I just want you to see how active she is. And she always wants to be around family, so even in this next video where my husband's washing his car and the kids are kind of helping, so is Summer. On June 15th, um, I threw a tennis ball, like I always do, and she you know, was going back and forth and fetching. And one of the times, she took a very sharp right turn and ended up suffering a spinal cord injury. Essentially, what happened was she had a disc that slipped, punctured her spinal cord, and paralyzed her hind legs. So that happened on June 15th. This video is June 17th um, when we brought her home from the veterinary's office. They didn't really give us a lot of tools other than have her rest, which isn't really, I don't know, I wasn't quite sure about that. We used a scarf to kind of help her get around, but I did eventually um, borrow a doggy sling from my aunt. But you could just see, I mean, she's not in any pain. She's just really struggling, and she got a little bit depressed because she couldn't do as much as she used to. This next video is on June 19th, so just two days later. Um, you can see she can wag her tail. She wasn't incontinent or anything, um, and we just felt instead of rest, she really just needed to move around as much, as much as possible, and again, she's not in any pain. She literally just can't feel her legs. Um, getting a lot better just two days after getting out of the pet hospital. She couldn't do things like you know, she could do a step. She couldn't do a flight of stairs. She can't, couldn't jump on any furniture. And we also leashed her in the backyard because we didn't want her to try to run around. Um, struggling a little bit up the stairs, but that was June 20th. And then June 25th, we got her in the water. And this water rehab, I swear, was a lifesaver for her. You can see when she's eating, she just kind of can't hold her weight up. But here we are, um, July 1st. And she can jump in. And she initially started just going in a right circle because her right leg was stronger, able to climb out of the pool by herself. And we ended up taking her to Cape Cod. Again, she is a water-loving dog. Um, so she was in the water and there was really no um, worry about her re-injuring herself. They said if she injured herself again, it would have been another fluke accident. Accidents like this actually normally happen to larger dogs, but they said because she's just so fast and long, that's kind of why it happened to her. This is July 23rd, running around, kind of looks, you know, a lot, be a lot better running, not as fast as she normally does, but very happy to be off leash and running around with the kids. You can see she, in a, in a second, she's going to kind of tip over when she sits down and you can see the way she sits, just that back left leg doesn't quite hold her up. She had a little bit of trouble going to the bathroom, not incontinence, but just the squatting part was a little bit difficult for her. This is August 20th, jumping in that water, really strong. You can see when she climbs out, she's doing a lot better. She was in this pool all day, every day with supervision, of course. And this next video is October, and she's as fast as she used to be. She had an amazing recovery. I'm so happy um, that we did what we did in regards to, you know, kind of rehabbing her ourselves instead of resting.